Hey everyone, this is Carolise, and today we want to talk about how to improve your work-life balance. Yes, so stay with me. Okay, so I know what you're thinking, right? What the hell did she do with her hair? I cut it! Look! I cut the hair! I cut that sucker right off! <laughs> and, of course, you see I got my little ombre going on. And it's just because I wanted a change, right? And I'm going to tell you about why I really cut my hair in the next few, so stay to the end. So this video is going to be about how to improve your work-life balance, right? And I, I got down this thought path because I had done the videos on business analysis, uh, soft skills, and I did presentation skills, I did communication skills, I did documentation skills, and I will put the link up here for you to go look at those videos. But there was one video I was promising to do, which was on organization skills. And so when I was thinking about organization skills, I was saying to myself, well, why do people really want to be organized? And it's because you want to be efficient, you want to make sure you get everything done, and you want to save time. And then I was like, why? Why do you want to save time? Why do you want to be efficient? What, what, what's the real benefit? And I realized it's because you want to finish your work so you can spend time doing what you really want to do, what you really like doing. And that led me down the path of what you really, really want by being organized is to have better work-life balance. So this video in particular is going to talk about getting to work earlier to improve your work-life balance. And it seems like such a no-brainer, like get to work early and leave early. That way you have more time for yourself. It seems very obvious, but there are so many things that stop us from actually getting to work early enough to get everything done that we need to get done for the day. So we don't end up taking work home and we don't end up feeling behind and having to rush and not getting everything done and feeling flustered and feeling like we're overburdened with work, right? A big part of having a better work-life balance is to be able to get the work done and get your life together as well as in have time for things that you really care about like spending time with your family going out with your friends you know going on vacation you know camping all the things that you do for fun you want to have more time to do that and you don't want to feel like your job is robbing you of the opportunity to spend time doing the things that you love so if you can get to work early you can spend more time quietly working on something before everybody else gets in and then you're having to meet with them and just being distracted so a part of it is and it's something that i'm struggling with myself and i'm going to work towards as well and that's why i'm sharing it with you because we're doing this together i'm not telling you because i'm great and i know it and i've been doing it and i'm an expert at it this is something i'm learning as well and so it's if you can get in early like two hours before you're supposed to start working you're not saying to do that because you want to give your employers free free labor time. Don't look at it like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm working more hours than I'm being paid for. Look at it as I'm doing a little bit extra so I can get more out of my, my day. But it's because you can have that quiet time to get things done and then by the time everybody comes in and start you know, distracting you and taking you away into different meetings and different things, when it comes to leaving at five, you can leave or whichever hour you leave, you're, you're ready to go, you're packed up, you can get out. If you work in an environment where they have a staggered um, starting, so for example, I work in Atlanta and there's a lot of traffic in Atlanta. So what most employers in Atlanta do, they have like three different times that you can get in. So the earliest time would maybe be like, I don't know, seven o'clock and you leave at four, or you come in eight and you leave at five, or you come in at nine and you leave at six. So things like that to help with the traffic. If you're on that kind of schedule, try to get in the earliest time possible. 
so that you can leave the earliest time possible so you can avoid traffic to go home as well as have time to do some errands, do whatever you want to do, sit with friends, chat, whatever, before it gets too dark and, you know, all of that, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, what do you actually need to do to get in earlier? So as a woman, there's much more <laughs> that we have to do in the mornings to get ready for work. I mean, I always see guys like come in like 6 o'clock and I'm like, how do you guys get here so early? Oh, we get up, we take a shower and we're leaving. That's it. They're done. <laughs> right? But as women, I, I know for me, I take a long time just getting ready. Getting ready is a lot of work. And I, I did a study on myself to see how much time am I spending doing each task. And I realized I was spending the most time curling my hair. So I would wake up, I had long hair. I would wake up, I would curl that thing with the curling iron. And I'd be fixing and looking and checking and fixing. And then there was time getting my face together. I put my, you know, my makeup base on. And then I put all that stuff. And I was, I did a time study. I was spending too much time just getting myself together right so i decided i was going to be drastic and i cut my hair mm. shave that off <laughs> i am not saying you should do the same thing i am not advocating that women should go shave their head so they can leave earlier that is not what i'm saying i'm saying for me i'm a little bit more drastic and i thought to myself what can i do to get in earlier and this is one of the things that came out of my study of myself Um, the other thing I wasn't doing very well, even though I was packing my clothes for the week and I would iron them and put them, you know, in order of which one I'm going to wear on Monday, Tuesday, the Friday, I would wake up in the morning and I would just want to wear something different. I tried on, I'm like, I don't feel like wearing this today. And I would start digging up, trying to find something else to wear. And so I wasn't sticking to what I planned to wear. So that took a lot of time to find something else in the morning. So what I do is I plan more than the five days so i have like seven or eight suits or sets of clothes that i plan to wear just in case i don't feel like that and i can mix and match and that was one way that i was getting out earlier the other thing was because of how my house is i was parking into my garage and in the morning i'd back out turn around and then go out so what I do is when I go home in the evenings I park facing out and I'm not parking in the garage anymore that saves me the time of backing out of my garage and turning around every morning I do park in the garage on a weekend because I'm not you know in a rush to go anywhere but during the week I park facing out that way as I get out of my house I'm ready to go it's just these little things that you don't think about that they might just save you two minutes here, two minutes there, two minutes there, but it all adds up and helps you to get out quicker. The other thing is breakfast. So I tend to, I want my daughter to eat breakfast in the morning before she gets to school. Her school does provide breakfast, but I, I want to be the one to give her breakfast. Like I feel like that's a mommy task and I want to do it. You know, I want to make sure she has a good breakfast when she gets to school. Her, her tummy isn't like empty or anything and she can learn. So I feel like I have to. So I wake up in the morning and before I go to bed at night, actually, I think of what I'm going to make for breakfast. And if I need to prep it, I prep it. Now, a lot of parents just put cereal and they eat. But my daughter is very picky. So she'll wake up and she'll say, Mommy, I want pancakes or something. A lot of the times I try to make food that is like doable while I'm doing something else. So, for example, she might want eggs, boiled eggs. So I can put the eggs there to boil them while I'm doing something else. So I can multitask. Or if it's pancake, I put the pancake in the oven. So it can keep going <laughs> while I'm getting ready. So I have to be smart about what I do. I don't want to be slaving over the stove the entire time in the morning. So I try to find other ways to do it. There are times that some things that you just have to be there. Like if I'm making scrambled eggs, I just have to be there. But I don't make the same thing every morning. And so if there are chances or time opportunities for me to um, make breakfast happen while I'm doing something else, I do it that way too. <laughs> So 
So the other thing is getting my daughter ready for school. So that's probably one of the easiest things I've been able to do in the mornings, get my daughter ready for school because she's such, she's such an adorable kid. I just pick up what she wants in the night before. I have everything ready for her. I wake her up, she takes a bath. I put on whatever I picked out. She's not very picky about what she's wearing. And I can just put her to sit down and eat her breakfast. And I say, eat all of your breakfast. And she comes back and say, mommy, mommy, I ate all of my breakfast. And she shows me the empty plate. <laughs> I mean, she's adorable and she's easy to get ready. So I'm very lucky like that. Um, not everybody's going to be that lucky. Sometimes some of you might have kids that are very picky and they want to wear this or that and all that. Just work with your child. If you know that the personality of your child, work with your child and try to get everything prepped the night before so that you don't have to spend too much time in the mornings running around trying to get the kids all organized. You got to organize yourself, you got to organize the kid. And then it's like wasting of time and next thing you know you're late all right so that's one thing you can do to get out earlier the other thing that I recommend is if you can find a school that is on the way to work but because my child is so young I can choose which you know daycare she goes to when she goes to high uh, I mean kindergarten then it will be the nearest to my house and I have to figure out that when that time comes but if you can choose try to choose something that's en route to your job I mean that's obvious but you'd be surprised how many people like pick a school that they have to do detours and go here and there and turn around and go all kinds of way that's a lot of um, time that you waste in the morning just dropping off kids um, so if you can find something nearest to your home that would be best if not something on the way to work would be great if you have that choice right that's just something that you can think about The other thing I think that's really, really good to help you to get out earlier and get into your job and your office earlier so you can have a better work-life balance, which is the point of all this, is, for example, for me, I work on a high-rise building. I'm on the 18th floor of my building, and it's, it's, I think it goes up to, I don't know, 30 floors or something. So there are several levels of parking, right? So... A lot of times I come in on level C, that's the, the, the level that is facing the road that I take to go in. And so I would go in level C and I might not be able to find parking. I go one level down, I'm on D, I find parking easily and then I take an elevator from D to the first, um, the ground level. And then I get into my building, take another elevator to my actual office. So I'm two elevators I have to deal with. And so there may be delays in the elevator to get up the first one and then there's another delay for the one to get into your office so what i've been doing is i just go on the actual first level so people tend to avoid the first level because they think they'll never find parking it's always full everybody wants to be on the first level so i'm never going to make it but if you get in earlier guess what you are among the first people there so you will get the parking and then you avoid having to deal with two elevators or something like that so if you can park as close to the, the door as possible that's better that's all i'm saying like if you have an option if you have several levels of parking try to pick the one that's clearly easier and quicker you know what i mean like find a way to park as close as you can to avoid the wait time if you work in a high rise like me to get into the building So the other thing which is very important is there is no point in you going early and then wasting the time chatting, chit-chatting at the cooler, um, checking Facebook, doing all that stuff before everybody comes in because you're just there early. Makes no sense. The point is you're going in early so you can leave early. So what you have to do to complement all of this activity to get in early, once you do get in early, you need to make your plan for the day your checklist for the day what do i need to accomplish and what can i do now that i'm here that doesn't depend on somebody else so if you can start working right away then do that because when the clock strikes four or five or whatever the time is based on the time that you got in you want to be out of there because you have other things to do so try to get the work for the day done in that day so if you get in early, just start attacking the day as soon as you get in. Start attacking the day. Start doing it. Start getting stuff. Start sending those emails. Start, you know, work. And then 
when it's time to take your break, you take a break, you go for your lunch, whatever, you enjoy that. And when it's time to leave, you leave. Now, as a part of your work-life balance, now it's summertime, it's beautiful outside. Um, some people, they, you know, they bring lunch to work and they eat at their desk and keep working. That's fine if you know you work in that environment, but take a break sometime. Go outside for your lunchtime. Sit outside if there's a, if there's like a chair outside or anything available that you can sit and relax. Go outside, take a fresh breath, look at the nature, you know, enjoy something about your day outside of just being at your desk heads down. In my office, we have a beautiful setup where there's like a fountain and there's chairs. It's really nice outside. I'll do a video one day outside of my office and show you the environment. It's really, really nice. Um, just to give yourself that break because a part of your work-life balance is to feel like you are doing something for you as well, not just at work and getting work done, but you need to be able to balance that out with your own personal life and your own um, sense of being. It helps you too to refresh and then to get back at it. So just these are some of the tips I think could help you. Main video is about getting to work earlier, right? So these are the tips I think will be helpful in getting to work earlier. And look out for the other ones that I'll be bringing out in my work-life balance series. And of course, guys, please subscribe. You know, I don't have enough subscribers and I, I, I really would like to see that you appreciate my videos <laughs> by just subscribing. I would really appreciate that. So subscribe, like, comment, and I will see you next time in the next video in this series. Thank you so much. So I've had this new hairstyle for about a week now and I'm still getting used to it. Like I literally have no hair on both sides of my head. <laughs> because <laughs> I shaved it all done. Originally, the girl, she gave me a mohawk style, so it was like coming down into a V and then going up like that. And she was thinking of giving me like a teal color here, and then I was like, oh, I'm not that bold yet. I'll get there, I'll get there. But I'm like, give me the purple plum color, please. <laughs> so I got that instead, and I, I think it's nice. I think it's a new look on me. The way it's cut right now, if you can see, there's nothing, I, I literally have less hair to deal with, right? That's the first thing. And then the little hair that I did, ha I do have, all I need to do is literally just hold this thing, curl it like that, and I would be done. And I'm done, right? So it, it's, it's getting easier <laughs> to do my hair to get out in the morning. Um, I shocked some people with it, like, what did you do? Right, so people had various reactions to it, but it's okay. It's my hair. It's my style. I choose what I want to do with myself So um, that's my new look for now. You know, I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you guys and I will see you next time. Take care